the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. God bless you. How you doing? <laughs> uh, this is the uh, this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. I got a great topic today. Uh, I think all the topics are great. Tell you the truth, but they, but there's still thing that is trying to focus on what's going on, uh, tying in the scriptures with today, living the day Christian walk. Uh, <laughs> today where we all try to do the things that lines up with the word of God that's critical for us to do things that line up with the word of God and to equip ourselves to do the work of the ministry and then not be religious uh, to me religious junk because look what's the main thing the main thing is that for God wants all men to be saved. The good news is that he has called us to go preach the gospel throughout the world. The good news is that the ministries are all equipped to do the work of the ministry. That is the whole purpose of our being. It's not only for ourselves to receive salvation through Yeshua, through Jesus, <laughs> in this case, people don't understand the difference, uh, so that we can fall in line with the the help others, usher other people into the kingdom of God. And religion focus on deflecting away, deflecting attention away from themselves toward other people in order to believe that just because there's a deep from from you to to project your opinions and judgment on somebody else that is going to make a difference for you when you have to give an account to God. You, you understand where I'm coming from? The whole purpose of coming into the ministry, the whole purpose of receiving salvation is not only to 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 have yourself be redeemed, but now become an ambassador for Christ, to have others also to be redeemed as well, and to help one another grow. Grow and use, uh, we talked about last week, use the, 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 the word of God to address our day-to-day -day life. That That's to have that abundant life that Christ said we're supposed to have, right? John 10, 10, it says, the thief comes to steal, kill and destroy but Christ said he came to give life and life more abundantly and you know we even talking about the, even the Lord's prayer the fact is his will be done in earth as it is in heaven so we're not walk, talking about a Christian faith or a Christian walk that deals with the sweet by and by what I call me going home and being in, with the Lord it's talking about living a victorious life here with all the challenges that happens in this life because you're going to be challenged. You're going to be tested. But you can be victorious. And victorious doesn't mean, you know, running around with a trophy in your hand. But to be able to sit there and walk this life with a, a peace that surpasses all the understanding from within. Because the world will try to throw all kinds of junk on you. And, and, and try to, to, to do things that, that, that keeps you on the sideline. Well, you need to be able to be and let your light shine wherever you are, you know, in your home, in your job, in this walk in life. Be able to, to, to show that, hey, I'm a child of God because of him. And then I, I, I'm an ambassador because he calls me to be. If that's one of us. See, you are all individual ministries. And, and one of the things I talked about last week is, as individual ministries, sometimes we should learn to, not sometimes, it should be a lot, that we learn to bless one another in our ministries, in our walk. Amen? But let's go talk about the topic today. And let me show it to you. Uh, 
that I think is worth talking about because I, I'm still trying to get the, uh, I'm still trying to address the behavior of believers in the sense of stop trying to, to judge one another and find faults against one another as if, like I said, once again, as if that's going to make a difference to your salvation. The Bible said to work out your own salvation. And when you sit there and focus on looking at somebody else so that you can find fault in somebody else so that you can condemn somebody else, it doesn't, it is not going to change the fact that God is looking at you and people are looking at you. People are looking at the fact of how you behave yourself. What kind of fruits are you bearing? What fruits are we talking about? Fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. This topic today is teaching the gospel Yeshua's way. And one of the ways he taught was you address life by what is written. And one of the things I'm talking about what is written is you work out your own salvation. The other thing is you're called to preach the gospel. The gospel means good news. You are not called to judge other people. If you do that, you need to make sure that you got all your ducks in order before you can start putting people, other people down, condemning other people, calling them and saying they're going to hell while you sitting there going to hell yourself. Because you're not sitting there operating according to the commandments of Christ, the commandments of God. If you, if you, you read the Bible say you sin at one point, you sin at all points. So, and the other thing too is that you, you see in Romans 14, 12, that's why we want to make sure we want to kind of keep that in our uh, uh, forefront all the time. Is that in Romans, this is in my, if you look at the slide to the right, do you see Romans 14, 12? So then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. I'm going to keep that up front all the time for all of you. And the fact is that this platform is to read the word of God with simplicity and understanding. And, and here, Nehemiah 8, 8, it says, so they read in the book, in the law of God distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. So I'm saying is, let's keep these things in the forefront. That's what's on that slide. You see the topic on the right-hand side, you see the Romans 14, 12. Below, you see Nehemiah 8, 8, which is what I just read. Let's read the word of God with simplicity and understanding. Let's equip the saints to do believers to do the work of the ministry, all of you, and all of your individual ministry. And and I, I know those, uh, some ministries said, no, no, we're the, I'm the ministry. No, no, you are a, you are body, big, big ministry, whether you 50 people, 25 people, or thousands of people, you are a ministry as well. But each individual in your congregation are ministries they're supposed to go do the work of the ministry. You're supposed to equip them to do the work of the ministry. And, 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 and that means blessing one another, equipping one another financially as well to do the work of the ministry. What is the work of the ministry? To go preach the gospel. That's, that's what that type topic is all about. Go preach the gospel. That's what I want us to be able to do. Let's equip one another to do the work of the ministry. And one of the things you need to understand in equipping yourself is stop judging one another. Finding faults with one another. Because every last one of us, you know the Bible said that all is sin that comes short of the glory of God. Every last one of us. So we don't, let's not get wrapped up on the, the fault finding. Because the fault finding does nothing for you. It's not going to change what God is doing looking at you. That's why I said it in Romans 14, 12. You will give an account to God. Either you're going to get you rewarded, you're going to get to go before Christ and get rewarded for your works, or your works are going to be either, uh, either be uh, stubble, <laughs> stubbles, and, and hay, and be burnt up when it's tried. And that's why I think when you actually do the little fall find and all that stuff, you, you just... You basically build your ministry of stubble and hate. Let's start focusing on and let's equipping our sakes to to 
have gold and silver uh, in our works. Let's 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 target ourselves and equip ourselves to to be more than stubble and hay. And somebody can say, "What are you talking about?" I, what it says that the when you when you go before God and your works that you do <laughs> will be reviewed and and and, and they're going to be racked and stacked based on what your performance in doing the ministry but but at least you want to go before christ that's a good thing right but what is that you want to be an effective ministry uh, and i'm saying is that you the saints and the fivefold ministry gifts are to equip the saints to the work of ministry so uh good on you for those who are going to church services today and going to ministries i'm just I'm praying and hoping those ministry equip you to do the work of the ministry. And I want you to understand that you're supposed to do the work of the ministry. If you can focus on that, if you can get to that point, I think you're, you're going to be tracking. Do the work of the ministry. Amen. <laughs> and that's what is the work of the ministry? Go preach the gospel. That's what we're going to talk about. Go preach the gospel and stop focusing on judging one another because that's what a lot of cases many of us do we want to judge one another we 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 want to deflect uh the focus on us on somebody else and and you gotta remember <laughs> listen maybe you don't know and i and may help you out you are supposed to please god not man you're deflecting of of attention from other people who don't put you in hell <laughs> they don't determine your salvation they didn't redeem you <laughs> they they did not they won't be your advocate <laughs> your advocate is christ amen <laughs> and and while we're sitting there thinking that it is so cool to to point toward the faults of organizations, faults of people, so that you can sit there and say, Lord, look at me, I'm looking good. You look good to people, but you got to look good to God. God looks at the heart, not look at your flesh or your outward appearance. So you want to learn to please God. That, that's one of the things I'm going to say, look, in equipping the saints to do the work of the ministry, please God. Let's just call it for what it is. You must please God. You don't need to please your pastor, your ministry, your mama, your daddy, your brother, your sister, your friends. You must please God. You know, it's not your political party. You must please God. If you don't understand it, you must give an account to God. If you make sure that people try to tell you that 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 you they want you to give attention to like there's crazy people right now that wants to attack the government look attack prosecutors for prosecuting going after criminal behavior and they, they look look they're so focused on on pleasing man they're, they're so some people are so focused on doing things that don't make sense how do you how do you in in, in ministry Knowing somebody did wrong, still try to say they did the right thing. And I'm talking about this currently in politics. They were talking about the prosecutors for the, uh, those people that's prosecuting or pursuing criminal, potential, potential uh, crimes against the former president. And they're sitting there like, no, that, that's illegal. It's legal to, for prosecutors to, to, investigate a potential crime and you know but people got no problem investigating poor uh white people poor black people they have no problem persecuting people in the poor lower middle class the lower class or the middle class but they got a problem with people pursuing and investigating against rich people billionaires or formal presidents you know, the, the, I hope we want a system, and I know that's not what people want, but I hope people want to have a system where no one is above the law. 
And if you did something, you should answer to them. Just like they make you and me answer to it. I guarantee you the stuff that some of the things that they're investigating, if that was you, oh, you'd be in jail. Some of the people that went into January 6th, they went to jail. There's a, there's a political politician to sit there and went and visit them as if they're political prisoners of war. <laughs> uh, despite the fact they bust down the windows of the Capitol, they're still political. Uh, they 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 pursue the lie, the lie, right? The lie, the big lie. And then they and then the politicians are saying there was no lie, there was no big lie. Somebody stole the election. You'd be like, okay, so you go to 60, you have 60 cases, 60 courtroom hearings, it to include the Supreme Court. Go in there with no fact. You still, some of you still sit there. Accepting a lie because you want to accept a lie of that there was an uh, election stolen. The only thing you think was stolen, the fact is that your vote and then your vote did not outnumber the people who voted against it. And, and you got a problem with that. And then you even got finding creative ways to suppress the votes the next time around. And all you're doing is drawing people to vote <laughs> because you, people people do not want the status quo of injustice. People want a system that applies to everyone across the board. There's people who wants to keep the old ways of things and that doesn't work for me. If it's going to be injustice to be or injustice to people who look like me or injustice to poor people, whether they're black or white, people want, let's find that equality because you all are equal in the eyes of God. You don't, you may not want to feel like you're equal between your brothers and sisters, your, you know, the people who God created, the people who made it image of God, but that's what you are. God looks at you, and you still got to answer to God. So don't, don't get so deep and, and, for, and forget that. Amen. All right. So let's go back into the the topic. And let's go into the Lord's prayer. Excuse me. Uh, first, because we want to always try. At least that's the intent. Is to start off with what's written by the Word of God, right? So. The topic again is teaching the gospel Yeshua's way, which is the Hebrew name of Jesus. For those who don't know, that's all that is. Go talk to your pastor, and he'll tell you. Go look it up in the Wikipedia, and he'll tell you, all right? <laughs> it is written. He taught, he dealt with the temptations of life based on what is written. That's why you want to study the Word of God so that you can address challenges from other people based on what's written. Okay, amen? And this is your call. One of the things is written that you call to go preach the gospel. That's in Matthew and Mark in the, in the end of the chapter. It says, go preach the gospel. And you're not called to judge other people. That's not what you're called to do. And what I've seen, it started from the crusade. Nobody told you, because I saw the reason, here's a rabbit trail real quick, and then come right back. <laughs> I saw yesterday, when we were talking about some of the uh, radical groups out there, is, to, is to, to say that they're going to be the force that deals with the apocalypse, brings in the apocalypse, fighting for Christ. That That is what the person did. Same thing in the Crusades that was bloody and vicious and evil and outside the will of God. The, 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 the natural flesh said, we're going to go and take Jerusalem. That's what the Crusade was about. That was not called by God because God said, I didn't, God, if you read the book, when Christ comes, he comes with his army. He comes with the saints that he has. And they're coming from a third dimension. 
to deal with things in this world. You can't, you're not, you're not called to be in the crusade. You're not called to, to do the Spanish Inquisition. That's, that's not what you're called to do, but people did the Spanish Inquisition and tried to say they do it in the name of God. People did the slave trade and said they tried to do it in the name of God. People trying to do uh, the even the current 2022 or 2020 or up to down today, this, the person said that the person called the former president is a day by God and we had, it's not just him that said it. We knew that he, he, some of the evangelicals said it. Some of the traditional Christian church said it. That, 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 that Donald Trump is, is, is a day by God despite his fruits that he bear, despite the persecution or prosecution, excuse me, that's going on, the investigations going on, they're still saying that this man is called by God as if he is the the I don't I don't you know what? I don't even know what you're trying to say. You, whatever you, you go ahead with your bad self. If that's what you want, if you, all I know that a tree is known by its fruit. That's fair. A tree is known by its fruit. So you, you go ahead and 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 try to fight a battle for God, and He didn't call you to do it. That's really what this topic's all about. He's not calling you to pick somebody to fight for the kingdom of God. He didn't call you to fight for the kingdom of God. And he definitely didn't call somebody to use the tools of the devil to fight for the kingdom of God. God, he doesn't need you to do that. You're not called, you call, what are you called to do? What is the commission of Christ? To go preach the gospel, that's the good news. But you know what I see in ministries, I see in people, I see in religious people, is that they use the ministry to hurt people, suppress people, keep people down, to talk about people, to hurt people. We talk about the, from the abortion. Abortion is wrong. If you just focus just on the, in the womb, but you, you act like a devil toward people after they're born, or you don't care about them after they're born, then you're wrong. You can't have it. You, you can't have good intentions and bad intentions at the same time and say that you call yourself a Christian. You, you, you're not called. That's, that's, I'm just saying what's written. And this scripture is going to go over. What is written? Are you called to preach the gospel or are you called to, to be an instrument for God to hurt people, to arrest people, to kill people, to, to do bad things to people, to, to character assassination? Is, are you called to do that? Are you called to, to, to deflect your best your faults by looking at other people? Same thing they did with the, the, the Sadducees and Pharisees did, didn't they? They sat there and called Christ a sinner. And there's people that sit there and tell you today that if Christ showed up again, many of you would not let him into the ministry or your church building because you don't agree with his calling, his teaching. He said, if you love me, you keep my commandments. But when you sit there and judge people, condemn people, act like the crusade, act just like the Salem witch hunt, act like the, the uh, Spanish Inquisition, act like the Jim Crow laws, the slave trade. When you sit there and do those things that are the flesh, you you send the wrong message and you you you're deceiving yourself. You call to preach the gospel, no scripture we're gonna talk about. So let's first start off with uh, the the going into the first the Lord's Prayer. 
and then we're going to the topic. We won't go to the topic, but I'm saying is the first part of our message starts off with the uh, Lord's Prayer. Amen. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you.